And I'm gonna do a book review on The Giver. In this story, you will learn about the main character, Jonas, who lives in a community where everything is controlled. At age 12, every child is assigned a job. Jonas was assigned the job as the receiver of memory. Much responsibility comes with that job. The giver, an elder in the community, is the one who gives Jonas all the memories of the past, both pleasant and painful. The giver gives Jonas the responsibility of holding on to those memories. Jonas felt nothing unusual at first. He felt only the light touch of the old man's hands on his back. He tried to relax, to breathe evenly. The room was absolutely silent, and for a moment, Jonas feared that he might disgrace himself now on the first day of his training by falling asleep. Then he shivered. He realized that the touch of the hands felt suddenly cold. At the same instant, breathing in, he felt the air change, and his breath was cold. He felt the suddenly chilled air. It was very startling, but he was not at all frightened now. He was filled with energy and he breathed again, feeling cold air swirling around his entire body. He felt it blow against his hands where they lay at his sides over his back. The touch of the man's hands seemed to have disappeared. Now he became aware of an entirely new sensation. Pinpricks? No, they were soft and without pain. Tiny, cold, feather-like feelings peppered his body and face. He put out his tongue again and caught one of the dots of cold upon it. It disappeared from his awareness instantly, but he caught another, and another, and another. The sensation made him smile. One part of his consciousness knew he was still lying there, on the bed, in the annex room. Yet another separate, separate part of him was, be, was up right now, sitting a, in a sitting position. And beneath him, he could feel that he was on, on soft decorated, he was not on soft decorated bed covering at all. And he rather seated on a flat hard surface. His hands now held, though at the same time, they were still motionless at his sides, a rough damp rope. And he could see, though his eyes were closed, he could see a bright whirling torrent of crystals in the air around him. And he could see them gather on the backs of his hands, on the backs of his hands. His breath was visible. Beyond the swirl of what he now somehow perceived th was the thing the old man had spoken of, snow. He looked out on a at a great distance. He was up high someplace. The ground was thickened with furry snow. He sat slightly above it on a ha hard, flat surface. Sled, he knew abruptly. He was sitting on a thing called a sled and the sled itself seemed to be poised at the top of a long, extended mound that rose from the very land where he was. Even as he thought the word mound, his new consciousness told him hill. Then, the sl then he was sitting on the thing called a sled again. With him upon it, be he began to move through the snowfall, and he understood instantly that he was now going downhill. No voice made an explanation. The experience explained itself to him. Ex itself to him. Jonas and the Giver both lived in a world where there was no weather since everything was controlled. So they had never seen rain or snow or sun or anything. It was just always cloudy with no weather. Also, look at some other books by Lois Lowry, such as Gathering Blue, Number of the Stars, Messenger, and Goonie Bird Green. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> How many times do we need to do this before we get? What's up? Remember we're taking the picture? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah.